What's up guys and welcome to another video. In today's video I am talking about this very interesting knife right here. So this is from uh, Heed Industries and I'm participating in a pass around for it uh, currently and it is called the Heed Sea Knight. And it's a uh, it's a very interesting ballast song. So this is this is the box that it comes in. It's actually pretty neat. Um, it's got this like uh, you know like aluminum sort of box thing going on, which I think is is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it is the Heed C Knight, and uh, it's a bit of a weird one. Um, I mean, you can tell immediately just from looking at it that it's a little strange, right? Like you know, it's not. Definitely not a normal ballast song, but when you look closer, then you'll start to notice that things actually get really weird. So if you look at those pivots, you can see those are custom pivot hardware. And um, that's a bit of a tricky subject for me, for sure. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about that in this video. But yeah, it has custom hardware. Uh, you know, some people I think might find that really cool. Other people might think that that's a bit of a gimmick. Uh, I am more in the gimmick camp, but I do see what's going on here. I think it's pretty neat hardware and it definitely looks amazing. I do really like the look of the hardware, but uh, you know, it's not, it's not the best thing in the world for it to be custom like that. Thankfully, though, inside the box, you will notice there are two bits that it comes with. So if you look at that, it voila, it does in fact come with two bits uh, for that custom hardware. So at a bare minimum, you have at least one bit that you can lose before you're like royally screwed, right? Because um, that's, that's the big thing that you don't want to have happen is you don't want to be absolutely royally screwed if you lose, you know, one bit. Because then you can't adjust your knife at all, and that, that sort of sucks. Um, I will admit that compared to Torx, you know, Torx bits are a little bit out there for most people. Like, um, Torx bits already... Some people own Torx drivers, but the thing is, if you don't have knives, you probably don't own a Torx driver, especially in this size. Um, Torx bits are, you know, very useful in the balisong industry, but also they're very familiar to people uh, in terms of actually using them, right? Um, when it comes to using a Torx bit, it's very similar to like a flathead or a uh, Phillips head screw where you literally just, you know, you stick it in there and you screw and it's like, it's pretty easy, it self-centers, all that stuff. Uh, this custom bit, while it looks very cool, uh, has a bit of a problem with locating. You'll see as you try to like get it in there, you have to really line it up. Like I haven't even, I haven't, I'm trying to get it in and I haven't even got it like... There it goes. See, you, you really have to line it up perfectly to kind of get it to work. And that's a bit of a problem. Like it's, you know, you can get used to it. And the more that I played with this and my little, my little driver that I have, uh, the better it kind of felt. But it is a problem that you have to deal with there. Um, so, you know, it's got, it's got these custom, custom bits. That's cool. I will say though, it's a little annoying to me that it has the custom bits in terms of it being both the uh, pivot mechanism and the uh, weight adjustment mechanism, and we'll talk about that in just a second, because at the end of the knife, right down here, you have regular ass Torx bits. <laughs> so, which is it? You know what I mean? Like, I, I, if it had a custom bit and then the entire knife was that same custom bit, okay, I can, I can get behind that, um, you know, a little bit better. But then having a knife that has custom up top, but then torques down below, that just means that you're just going to have to switch your bit, you know, to work on the same knife. And like, I don't want to have to do that. That's, that's a bit silly. So personally, I would have liked to see just Torx T10 across the entire knife. That's, uh, that's my main thing that I like to see. These are T8 down here, which is even kind of frustrating in of itself. I'd love to see T10 just across the board because that means that you just need one driver and you can adjust everything. And honestly, Torx T10 is basically the perfect size for balisongs because it's big enough that it's hard to strip, but it's small enough that it can be used like in a spot like this on the handle where it's a relatively small spot that you have um, to put a screw there. Well, a T10 bit would fit in that spot. It would just be slightly large. Um, but I definitely prefer T10 to T8, and I prefer T8 to T6. T6 is the most useless freaking thing in the world. I don't know if you guys have seen T6 before. I think I might actually have a knife 
that is T6 in here. Let's let's check. Let's let's looky looky do. Um, I really don't like T6. It is like my least favorite thing. Yeah, here we go. Um, so, sorry ELB, but uh, you can see right there that is T6. It is just the smallest freaking screw, and so it strips so easily. Um, and it's just really frustrating to adjust. So it looks kind of pretty, but I really, really dislike uh, T6. So, you know, at least it's T8, it's not T6, but it's still not perfect. And, and that's kind of where we're gonna get into here, right? It's a very, very cool knife, um, but at certain points you're kind of sacrificing a bit of functionality just for the look of these screws. But they do work and they are very good screws. I will admit they're extremely hard to strip, like I don't think you could strip these if you tried. And that's pretty cool. Um, but as I said, it's a little hard to get your screwdriver in there if you really want to adjust them. Like I'm just, oh my god, I'm just try. I just want to, <laughs> come on. Oh my god, see? Uh, this is not a bit. I'm there. We go. This is not a bit. I promise that this is this is just legitimately me struggling to adjust this thing. But once you get it nice and tightened down, um, the tolerances on this guy are very nice. Like they're very good. It's a very sexy knife. The bushings are perfect, so it does a really good job there. Um, but we should probably talk about the standout feature of this thing, right? And that would have to be this adjustable weight system. Um, it's pretty cool, honestly. I do love to see adjustable weight systems on balisongs. Uh, you know, that's one of the big things that's been happening in the balisong market lately is the idea of allowing the end consumer to adjust the balance of their knife. Um, it's not something new necessarily, but it is something that is taking over in a new way. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, here, it's a very cool idea, but I don't know if I would say that it works super well. And there's multiple reasons for that. First of all, you have four adjustments on each handle. So you have basically these little screws that you can screw and unscrew and loosen. And of course, all of them have this one screw. So it's a little bit frustrating to <laughs> loosen them and unloosen them because it's so hard to put the goddamn thing in there. Oh my God, just go in. <laughs> Oh, why are these screws so hard to turn? I just want, just give me Torx, please. I love, you know, I love the design. I think it's neat, I, but I don't care that much either. So I just, I would like Torx. There we go. Um, so yeah, it's a little, little uh, difficult to adjust all of the pieces. But the other thing is that honestly, it doesn't make that big of a difference while flipping. Um, like, so my friend Stitch uh, was the one that had this before me, and he was talking about uh, that when he tried it, the only time he really noticed any difference was when it was either at the very top or the very bottom. Like, only the extremes was it really, like, a noticeable difference, and I absolutely agree with him. Personally, I think it flips best when all of the um, weights are at the bottom, uh, because I'd like a little bit of a handle bias to my knives. Uh, but, you know, it does... There is a range of adjustment here, but it's really not that much. Hi, Penny. How are you? Yeah, that's what she says. Um, the range of adjustment isn't that much. Like, what I just went from was relatively handle-heavy to relatively neutral by moving all of those weights. And you saw how much work that took. That was a pretty substantial amount of work to just move <laughs> the four weights from one side to the other, and it didn't provide that big of a difference in terms of the flipping capability. So, all in all, at the end of the day, I think it's a very cool knife, and I think it works really well. Um, if you look at it for a long enough period of time, you might notice it has some distinctions that remind you of other knives that are very similar to it. Um, specifically, not the channel alpha beast, but the uh, sandwich alpha beast. This has very similar features to the sandwich alpha beast and very much calls back to it in terms of flipping experience, which is a good thing. You know, the, the sandwich alpha beast is a mainstay in the community for a reason because it's a very good flipper. And so this is also a very good flipper being a nice chunky squarish sort of um, channel titanium design. Um, I will say the blade is fantastic. I love this blade profile. I think it looks really good. And then also because you have all that extra thickness down here, it carries momentum extremely well from trick to trick. So you do have a benefit there. But 
the adjustability part is just really not um it's not my favorite it's not it's not perfect um and then on top of that once again these cu the custom hardware is cool but it's not my favorite i would much prefer to have um sort of a different hardware setup where it's not this custom hardware it's one that i can like have myself or like just regular freaking torques you know that would be nice um but I can deal with it. But it's just, it's definitely not my favorite. Uh, he did say that you can change out the hardware, and he gave the uh, specifications for the hardware. So, you know, you could go source some Torx, uh, you, you could get some Torx hardware and source it, you know, and, and find out, like, exactly what you want. But personally, I think that's a bit much. Like, I think that there should maybe be an option when you check out to either have the custom hardware or just have Torx hardware, because expecting the end user to go out and source this hardware, especially at lengths, like these these uh, these specific screws that are in here are extremely short, and so expecting an end user to go out and in, either buy the hardware that is exactly this correct length or modify existing hardware, that might be a little bit difficult for most end users, and so that's not it's not the best, but... I will admit this thing does flip really freaking well, so I do, I do really love it for that. So yeah, um, that's pretty much my uh, review of the C Knight by Heed Industries. You can you can heed my warning about this thing that yes, it flips like a badass. But uh, it's a little weird at the same time. Um, I will admit, personally, when it comes to adjustable uh, weight knives, I really like the method of screwing in something to the bottom of the handle because that makes a much more substantial difference than this does in terms of you could put in, you know, a steel weight or an aluminum weight or, like, plastic G10 3D printed stuff or, like, a tungsten weight. Like, you could make all sorts of different biases for your knife just by adding a small weight at the end. And because it's all the way at the end, you actually don't need that much weight weight to create a relatively huge difference. Um, but I will admit it is a very, very cool concept here, and it does work to a degree. It's not something that, like, absolutely fundamentally changes the way the knife flips, you know, from the ground up, but it does genuinely change it somewhat, and I think that's cool. Um, this thing retails for around $400. I don't think Heed has, like, fully, completely cemented a price. Um, you know, he was talking to me and saying that, like, due to inflation and the way that the economy is right now, that the price is a little, a little weird, but he's working on it. So, around $400 seems to be where this thing is sitting. And honestly, I gotta say, for that price tag... I'd buy it. It is a very, very cool knife. The blade is fantastically done. The grind looks amazing. It, this thing is sharp as fuck, by the way. Um, and so, yeah, for that price, I would buy it. My only request would be that if I were to buy it, it came with Torx hardware instead of the custom hardware. The custom hardware looks cool, but personally, I would just like... I just like Torx T10. Just, just all over the freaking thing. Just give me Torx T10 and I'm happy. I don't need... I don't need this. Um, but yeah, overall, really like it. I really like the way he put the H in here, too, where the grips go, because it kind of looks like his logo kind of reminds me of... Uh, I'm, I'm from Texas, and uh, when you have a ranch in Texas, uh, you normally would take your first name or last name and kind of put it into a, uh, a cattle prod like that, um, or, or a... Uh, Oh, God, what do you call that thing? You, you get it. A brand. Yeah. So this is basically like a branding iron uh, kind of logo. So it looks like he almost branded uh, his brand into <laughs> the the knife itself. So I really do like that. Uh, the, the, the Texas in me does like the branding. Penny, do you like the branding? Do you like the branding on the heed? Yeah. Mm, Penny likes it. And you know what? If it's got Penny's seal of approval, it's got my seal of approval. So yeah, it's a pretty badass knife. It's got a few problems, but it's really not a bad knife in any way, and it's absolutely worth the price tag. Like, as I sit here flipping it, I'm just like, oh man, this thing does feel real sexy. And also, the tolerances are just, they're just fantastic. I mean, there's like no play in here. It does feel, you know, very high quality. Um... And honestly, if I'm comparing it to, like, the, uh, the Sandwich Alpha Beast, it's kind of like... It's kind of in between a Sandwich Alpha Beast and an Alpha Beast Infinity. It's like if you rounded the edges of an Alpha Beast, and honestly, I prefer it. Like, the, the Alpha Beast is kind of known for having very square 
edges. You know, it's got a chamfer, but not much more than that. And uh, this thing has that really nice rounding, and oh man, it just feels great in the hand, both for fanning, but also stopping. Like, it's, it's square enough that you can do whatever you need to, but it's round enough that when you fan, it feels really smooth, so... Yeah, overall, it's pretty pretty badass. Pretty pretty good little thing, you know. It's a uh, it's not my favorite, but it's also absolutely something that I would buy. So I'm gonna keep an eye out for this when he does another drop. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you next time. Whoop, peace.